If you have configured Google Analytics key events, but they do not work, then this video is exactly what you need. I'll share a bunch of tips. So let's get started. The first reason is that maybe your event names are too long. In the Google Analytics for documentation about event collection limits, you will find that the length of the event name should be up to 40 characters. And there's a note here, if your event name exceeds the limit of 40 characters, an additional parameter in the network request sent to Google Analytics will not contain this underscore C. And this is necessary for Google Analytics because if the event is sent and Google Analytics tracking code automatically appends this, it means that Google Analytics will treat that event as a key event. But if your event name is, let's say, 41 character long, then this will not be appended and that event will be tracked, but it will not be treated as a key event. The next potential reason is an honest human mistake, but it's possible that maybe it applies to your situation. So even if you're sending the event to Google Analytics and it is displayed in the reports, for example, event reports, it's still necessary that you mark that event as a key event if that event is more important to your business. You can mark an event as a key event by going to admin, then events, and then you can flip the toggle next to an event that you want to mark as a conversion. For example, if you want to mark form submission as a conversion, you can just flip the switch right here. If you want to mark an event as a conversion, but you just started sending it very recently and it's still not available right here, then you can go to key events, click new key event, and then enter the name of that event. However, if you do so, then pay close attention to possible typos. For example, if you are sending an event which is called form submission, but you register a new key event which is called form submission with the uppercase F, then your key event tracking will not work because Google Analytics is case sensitive. And if you want to be accurate, you must pay attention to every small detail. Another reason might apply to you if you are using Google Tag Manager. Maybe the event tag that is supposed to send that key event is not firing when it should. Here I have a demo page with the form and Google Tag Manager preview mode has connected. In that container, I have a GA4 event tag that is supposed to fire when I will successfully submit this form. So now let me submit that form. I am now on a thank you page, but if I go to the preview mode, I will see that my form submission tag did not fire, even though I am on a thank you page. And in the trigger, I am looking for page path that contains slash thank you. But here, the tag has not fired, even though I am on DOM ready. So if you have this kind of situation, then dig deeper and troubleshoot this issue with various features of the preview mode. Here I can click on the tag. I can see that its status is not fired. And here are the conditions of the trigger and one of them was not met. If I switch to names, I can see what kind of conditions were included in the trigger. So I'm looking for the event GTM DOM, which means DOM ready. And then the second condition is page path must contain slash thank you dash. But if I switch to values, the actual value of the page path is slash thank you slash. Apparently I left some typo and instead of slash, I entered a dash right here. So this could be fixed by removing that dash and inserting the slash. And now if I click save, then click preview mode to refresh it and then submit the form again. Now my tag on DOM ready has fired because both conditions are met. Another situation might be related to consent and there are many moving parts here. So I cannot give you a super specific universal solution, but I can show you several directions where you can investigate further. For example, here I'm looking at a demo website and the consent mode is implemented which means that all default states are denied. And let's say that I did not give consent. So I clicked reject in the cookie consent pop-up. Now, if I go to the website and fill in the form, oh, also one more thing to mention is that in this Google Analytics event tag, 
in advanced settings, consent settings, I added this configuration where this tag should require additional consent for the tag to fire, which is analytic storage. It means that this tag will fire only if analytic storage is granted. But right now, analytic storage is denied. So let's see what will happen. Here I submit the form. And if I go to the preview mode and click here and go to tags, my form tag did not fire because it was blocked by consent settings. I can click here and I can see what kind of storage was required while at this particular moment it was denied. So this might be your case if you have implemented or someone has implemented basic consent mode on a website. Now, in other situation, you might be working on a project where advanced consent mode is implemented. It means that consent states still remain, they might be denied or granted, but your tags will still fire. And then based on the state of the consent, some data might not be sent to Google Analytics. So let me do that. First, I will remove that additional consent from the form submission tag, which means that this tag will fire regardless of the consent. But if analytic storage is denied, then things like cookies will not be used. So now if I refresh the preview mode and then submit the form again, here in the preview mode, I will see that my tag fired, but the consent was denied. So what does it mean is if I click on this Google Analytics measurement ID, I will see what kind of event was sent to Google Analytics. And if I click on this particular hit, I will see that cookie consent state is G100. 100 means that ad storage and analytic storage were both denied. And if you send an event to Google Analytics 4 with status G100 or G110, because the last digit means the status of analytic storage, then this kind of event will be sent to Google Analytics, but it will not be displayed in places like debug view. And it might or might not be later displayed in your regular reports, for example, acquisition reports in Google Analytics. That depends on data modeling and some advanced features related to consent mode and data modeling. The next possible reason is related to internal traffic. If you browse your own website, then by default, Google Analytics will track your visits and technically you will be polluting your own data. Because let's be honest, you are not the real visitor of your website. You are the owner of the website. So to avoid that, or at least reduce the impact, Google Analytics has a feature to exclude internal traffic based on IP address. In this context, it's possible that maybe your own IP address is already excluded. That's why you're not seeing your conversions, or also known as key events, in Google Analytics 4. But of course, this would apply to your own key events, not key events triggered by other website visitors. You can check this by going to admin, then data filters, and check if internal traffic filter is active. If it is testing, then this tip does not apply to you. But if it is active, then you should verify if your own IP address is included in the filter. To do that, go to data streams, then click on website data stream, and then configure tag settings. Here you should click show more and then select define internal traffic. If you don't have any rules here, then no internal traffic is excluded. But if you have at least one rule, then check what is inside of it. So I will click here and I see that one IP address is excluded. Now I should check what is my current IP address in order to compare it against this rule. You can do that simply by going to Google search or you can just click this link right here and somewhere in the search results you might see your own IP address. In my case, this IP address matches what is inside the rule, which means that currently Google Analytics excludes hits or in other words events coming from my own IP address. That's why I would not be able to see my test key events coming into GA4, for example, in the debug view. But as I've said, I want to emphasize that this would apply only to your own conversions or key events. If your problem with key events means that you have no events at all, then probably there is another reason.
Another possible reasons why you are missing some key events is related to ad blockers, privacy extensions, or maybe stricter rules in the browser. Because even though you might think that ad blockers are designed only to block ads, many of them also block tracking codes. And Google Analytics or Google Tag Manager are also tracking codes. So this can explain why you are missing a portion of key events. If you cannot see your own key events in Google Analytics, then maybe you have installed one of the ad blockers or other privacy extensions in your browser. Popular examples are Adblock or Ghostery, but don't limit yourself just to these particular extensions. There are more of them. Also, if you're browsing with VPN, like NordVPN, for example, they can block tracking codes as well. Another reason is also a human mistake, but it is possible. Maybe you have configured your event tracking in Google Tag Manager, you have tested everything, but accidentally you forgot to hit publish, which means that all those changes did not go live to your website visitors. You can check that by going to Google Tag Manager container of your website, then overview and see if there are any workspace changes. If you see anything here, it means that these changes are not yet published. For example, I have a form submission event, which I want to track as a key event. It was added, but it was never published. So a solution here would probably be to test everything once again, and then click submit and complete all the steps. Then these changes would go live for your website visitors. The next thing is actually not a problem. It is expected behavior, but this is just something for you to keep in mind if you are troubleshooting purchase events. When you're sending purchase to Google Analytics, you have to send various data points, including transaction ID. So if you send a test purchase to Google Analytics with transaction ID, and then you send the same purchase with the same transaction ID again, that second duplicate will be ignored. So if you have been wondering, let's say, why sometimes you see the purchase event in the debug view, but then later that same key event is no longer visible, even though you sent the purchase again, check if you are sending the same transaction ID, because if yes, all duplicates will be ignored. The next group of issues is related to cross-domain tracking. If your website visitors come to your site, which is let's say example1.com, and then go to another site that belongs to you, and is part of the same user journey, this is considered cross-domain. And to handle this and to properly track things like key events, you have to implement cross-domain tracking. However, there are many places where things can go wrong. And as a result, key events that happen on example two might be attributed to this website instead of the original traffic source, or maybe a lot of them will be attributed to direct or something else. So as I've said, there are many things that could go wrong in this kind of setup. And if you want to learn more about them and troubleshoot, I have a separate blog post about this topic. And if you want to learn more, then take a look at the description of this video. I will post a link there. Then it's always worth checking if thank you page, of course, if you have one, contains the tracking codes that are responsible for your key events and conversions. For example, if you're using Google Tag Manager, then make sure that Google Tag Manager container snippet is installed on a thank you page. This applies if your key events happen on a thank you page. An easy way to check that would be to enable Google Tag Manager preview mode, then go to the thank you page and see if Tag Assistant is still connected on the thank you page. If yes, then Google Tag Manager container snippet is installed most likely properly. If you have implemented key event tracking very recently, let's say just today, then the data will become visible in Google Analytics reports at least after 24 hours. Usually you should check your reports after 48 hours. Google Analytics requires more time to process the data. So if you have waited just, let's say 12 hours, that is not enough. Or you might see some data, but it will not be processed fully yet, which means that some numbers will be highly inaccurate. So you should be more patient and wait for at least 48 hours. But of course, you should do the waiting after you made sure that the key events are coming in and you see them in the debug view. If, on the other hand, the debug view is not working, then I will post a link to a troubleshooting guide below the video and you can dig deeper right here. And the final tip for this video is modified event. Google Analytics has a feature that allows you to modify incoming events. 
This can be found by going to admin and then selecting events. Then go to modify event. And if you see any rules here, then check them. If you don't see them, then this tip does not apply to you. But let's say that in my property, I actually have a modify event rule. In fact, you can have up to 50 different rules in the same property. So if I click here, I see a rule that does something to the form submission event. And this is triggered when event name is form submission. Now, if you remember from the beginning of this video, I had an event, which is this one, and I marked it as a key event. Now, if you have that kind of configuration, but there is a rule that changes the event name, for example, here, I have this rule that is looking for an event name. And if it equals to form submission, then that event will be renamed to form submission, but it is written slightly differently. This event is not marked as a key event in my property. This is, but because of this modify event rule, my form submission events will be renamed and they will no longer be marked as key events. So it's very important to make sure that you don't have any weird modify rules that can interfere with your key event measurement. Hopefully this video resolved your issue, but if not, don't worry. Below the video, you will find a link to a blog post with more tips. So take a look there. If you found this video useful, hit the like button. That will help me understand what videos do you like and what should I create in the future. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager or GA4, then subscribe to my channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video.